Anthony, what is the situation with this restricted access? What exactly is Iran saying? Well, what we know right now is that uh, a three-month deal struck between Iran and the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is uh, of course, responsible for monitoring uh, Iran's nuclear activities, that a three-month deal between those two has expired. And so far, we haven't heard uh, of any indications of an extension or what kind of possible continued monitoring there may be. Right now, Iran is saying uh, that access to surveillance footage uh, of its nuclear sites has effectively been cut. We're expecting to hear from the Director General of the International National Atomic Energy Agency uh, later today. But so far, there's no indication uh, that the deal uh, is continuing. What that means, effectively, is it's a major additional blow uh, to the talks that uh, the various uh, partners to the deal, the original Iran deal of 2015, uh, are trying to uh, reestablish because it raises the level of mistrust. Uh, it's a further intensification uh, of the moves of Iran away from the original parameters of that deal. Uh, and it's uh, certainly uh, a, a step in the direction of increased pressure uh, on the original signatories of the deal, because uh, in the words of uh, uh, some uh, uh, diplomats being quoted, uh, it effectively means that the International Atomic Energy Agency would be flying blind. Well, so this, all of what you're saying seems to indicate that the window that the U.S. and others have to negotiate a deal appears to be closing even more. What does this say for the prospects of a return to some kind of agreement? It certainly is uh, shrinking the window for a possible return to the deal. For several weeks now here in Vienna, the original signatories have been involved in talks. The United States hasn't been talking directly uh, to Iran. They've been, uh, as I understand it, uh, in separate hotels. But the other signatories, including the European Union, uh, Russia, China, uh, have been involved uh, in trying to reestablish some kind of framework for a return of Iran uh, to the original deal of 2015. That's been accompanied in recent months by an increase in pressure exerted by Iran uh, on those signatories, uh, specifically, of course, the United States, uh, with Iran uh, continuing to enrich uranium well outside the parameters of the original deal and essentially ramping up the pressure. And the problem is that it's not as simple as saying, well, we're just going to return to that original deal, because a lot has happened since the Trump administration uh, tore it up in 2018. And there are other issues on the table, including, for example, uh, Iran's uh, standard rocket arsenal, uh, these kinds of things. So an incredibly complex situation. And this has added pressure. It doesn't, though, necessarily mean that these talks are dead in the water. There is a negotiating tactic here on both sides. Uh, Iran saying that it won't return to the deal unless the United States uh, and the other signatories lift sanctions that were reimposed on Iran after Trump tore that deal up. Uh, and at the same time, United States uh, not wanting to be seen for strategic reasons to be capitulating uh, of sorts. So the talks aren't dead in the water, but the window is shrinking and the pressure is on. Okay, France 24 correspondent Anthony Mills in Vienna. Thanks so much.